Hey, Debbie. How are you? I'm doing okay. Um, oh, that's okay. I've got. Do you mean for this? Yeah, that's okay. That's totally fine. I, a, if you have a computer, you can look at them online. I, I don't have projection, um, but there are slides. There are printed out slides that are at. Okay. Take a seat forward. Oh. You want to just summarize when we get there? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. And if I skip, like, I didn't know that, so. Um, so if I get to uh, the logical spot, which I got to figure out where it is, um, um, don't hesitate to speak up. Okay, let's just hope I don't run out of power of any of the three things I'm running unpowered right now. And then I'll be okay. So, you don't use an iPhone, do you? You don't use an iPhone, so you can't charge that. You use this, so you can't charge my Mac. Um, and then my my weirdo thing that I've got in my ear is so I can do it as a conference call and people that... Susan Horn wants to be dialed in okay. so I can talk. And I... It's really strange that these as, as wired things look totally normal to me, but as an unwired thing, it looks like a very weird earbud. <laughs> yeah. It just kind of jumps out. Um, Hey, wait, you got out of there on time, huh? Oh, well. Well, you got to grab the swag then. I'm so, grab your swag. Yeah. Yes, I absolutely will. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Grab a piece. Grab, I don't know. They're going. It's... Congratulations. I saw the news. Yeah, good. That's great. Yeah, it would help great. if I could spell, but yeah. Um, That's okay. I so I feel good that that my 10 minute section went for 20 very plus well. minutes. So yeah, it went yeah. very well. And good. I thought, you know those questions. I, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was very positive. And I, I, I thought, you know, you you providing a little bit of definition. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, saying yeah, I mean, we'd love for you guys to come over and you know the voting number on this on our subcommittees yeah. and help guide guide the content. Yeah. The direction. Yeah, it's not uh it's not like hey we've got this thing and we just want money or something I like that. The so, example was good. I pulled that up while you were talking. Yeah. I talked to the uh, former president about it too. He, he he described it it was interesting and um he said, you know, this is a little different because it's neurologist, it's not condition focused. Right. But, but it has still, similarities. It's very and, similar. I and, mean I looked at their Axon, you know, uh web page. They have a separate web page for yep. that. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean it's very similar. Yeah. Um, good. How are things coming at your? How'd you guys do? How'd you guys fare in the uh, in the weather? So we were kind of between both of them. So we didn't really. I mean, we had a lot of rain. It's yeah. Kind of horrible. I had a I had a clinic down on the Gulf Coast just a few days after it hit Houston. Mm -hmm. We had some flooding over there, and uh, but it was. You should see the picture she has of Texas children. It's like the main drag is just like the, the cars like are covered. The, yeah. Yeah. The river, right? It's a, a, a river, a river runs through it. <laughs> I think the one at the hospital is the one. I think that's that. Well, that and and seeing your neighborhood that looks like all the news shots I've seen with all the garbage piled out at the street. Like so the MD Anderson, the bridge that. Yeah. 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 So that's 
Well, there was a there was a story about a guy who thought he was stepping into a street and into 18 inches of water, and it was it was not. And so he stepped off and just and they he was able to swim to the edge and they rescued him quickly. But God, you can imagine that terrifying. The shopping center down the street from us. <laughs> People are jet skis. <laughs> um, That's ridiculous. Right, like right. so Tim went and had some. He bought pants and they needed to be hemmed. And, and so the other day, he's like, I'm going to go pick up my pants. And I'm like, they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> you are confused. Like, hey, I'm like, yeah, like, if they were actually, if they were sent out to be him, that's one thing. They were sent out. Exactly. That's a good point. <laughs> like, that's right. <laughs> waiters. I know, I was anticipating, and I did waiters. <laughs> So did you actually, it would be good to look at a point to see if there's a logical point, like probably at the pipeline where I talked about the pipeline or maybe the adult study group. Um, yeah, well, there's not, there's not, no, it's no, it's a bullet point. I know. So before that, though, we, we might make sense. Um, couple, uh, adult study group. So if, I I think a combination of, of semester and the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, although I think people are very, I don't know, unless you found them to be tested, I think people are totally willing to dive in. And June, June gets upset if you feel like you're taxing or everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's probably worth giving them an update to say where we are and that we went to this yeah. person and they think that not. yeah so do they understand that's okay and if i go by it feel free to say you're gonna you know say wait did you want me to give an update then that was 9 30 10 30 p.m was me not was me putting it in the wrong spot okay um, I don't know. He wants to knock at my door at 9.30 p.m. I'm not going to be anywhere at 9.30 p.m. at my hotel. I, like, oh, I, I, I didn't know what that was. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that, uh, I think Marsha pointed that out to me and I fixed it. Okay, good. So if you sit in the back, which is totally welcome, you need to use your computer to look at the slides. There's only a few uh, decks and they're forward. Or you can steal one back. Yeah. Because I don't have to You looked at them already. Right. I did. I did mail them. I, I sent them out. I'm, I'm covering all my bases. Since I don't have projections, I'm covering all my bases. Yeah, it's not. I, that is simply why. It's just like, it's like, we can be we can be informal. Everything costs. Oh, why is it too? Oh, and it charges and it its conductor. Yeah, it won't, won't work. Well, that's cool, though. You've got a conductive yeah. 
Charger. Hi. What's that? Oh, hi. I'm sorry. Hey, Carl. How are you? Thanks for uh, throwing me the softball in the yeah. meeting. I appreciate that. I'll take all the softballs I can get. Um, so. Yeah, no, I'm I'm excited. And I, and I was I was telling Wade, I'm happy that the meeting went long because I, you know, at least the, my little segment it seemed like there was good engagement, good yeah. good interest. Um, and oh, there's somebody, Susan. Is that you? Hi, this is Neil actually from Seattle. Oh, hi Neil. How you doing? So Neil, this hi. is going to be and so I um, I'm projecting the slides. I've mailed the slides. So if you have the slides, you can follow along that way. But I'm also projecting them if you'd prefer to go that way. Um, oh, I see I can Susan is there as well. So Susan, do you? I haven't. I didn't hear the ding. Susan, can you unmute for a second and tell me if you hear me? I fear she doesn't hear me. And two five three. I'm assuming everybody hears me. Um, but you can hear me, Neil. I see. What's interesting is I don't see you. Actually, Neil, do you have a two five three number? Yes, that's me. Okay, good. That makes sense. That's the Seattle area number. Oh, is that Neil? Neil is in my ear. Hi, Neil. I don't know Hello. if you could hear that, but that was Christy saying hi. Um, <laughs> so if you you can steal a set of slides, or you can open up your computer to see slides. And pardon me, I'm, I just so you you online know, I have an earbud in. I don't have projection, so I'm projecting from my computer. Um, and you can actually go and look at it if you want to see it live, but I sent out the slides to everyone. Um, no and I am don't have a – it's not like we have a conference call, so you're in my ear in an earbud, and I'm going to talk to people, and, like, I'll repeat questions and things like that to try to make it um, consumable by others. And there's an 801 number joining. Is that you, Susan? That's me. Hi. Hi, Susan. Welcome back. How is your homestead? Uh, the homestead is safe. We were oh, very, I'm very fortunate. I'm um, thrilled yep. to hear that. I'm, I'm here with some colleagues from Houston, and she's showing me pictures of uh, life in there at their hospital and you know, around their neighborhood, and it's quite quite amazing. Um, yes. Uh, Ken Rogers. Hi, Ken. How you doing? So Good. we're still we're still gathering people into the room, and you're in a, in my ear in an earbud and. Oh, no problem. I've sent out slides, so I would recommend uh, – I'm projecting the slides as well. If people want to go to freeconferencecall.com and join a meeting entitled CPRN, they can do that as well. But, but I, don't, I don't know that will change your experience in any meaningful way. Here. I didn't have enough slides to go around. How are you, Barbara? Paul Gross. I'm doing, uh, I'm doing okay. I'm in this weird state that I'm running a meeting and I have an earbud in so I can broadcast the meeting. So I feel a little funny, but I'm doing okay. You must be an awesome When you see me kind of look around and go like this, you'll say, oh, he's not so. Yeah, it could be that. It could be that. All right, I'm going to steal more of these. So, so we're going to gather for another couple minutes just because people are coming from pre-conference things and the like. Jeff Leonard. Hey, Jeff. Paul here. So, just so you know, we've got a, oh, I don't know, two, four, uh, seven, ten, twelve people in a meeting room, and you're, you guys are all in my ear and an earbud, and I'm just gathering a few more people before we start. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Looks like I have enough battery power to get through all of this. All right. Hi, Marcia. Uh, let's let's get um, let's get going if we could. All right. Gary's calling the meeting to order with his hand gavel. Um, okay, so so let me set some context first, just because there's some oddities to this. I have this new fancy AirPod thing in my ear because this is the way I'm broadcasting on the uh, on the line on so for the conference call. So there are about six or so people on the conference call, um, so they can uh, listen in, and we're recording it. So like if somebody says something, I'm going to probably repeat it. So bear with me on that front. The other thing is. Um, this was not a room that had projection, and it didn't strike me as worth paying for projection for one hour, so I did not um, uh, do that. Um, but what I'd like to do is, um, so I've invited both the site candidates, people that are pursuing joining CPRN, as well as investigators in CPRN to the meeting. We've got more people joining. Hello, hello, hello. Come in. Welcome. You're just missing my explanation of my funny white earbud that is in my ear. Um, so I am going to repeat things a bit for the people that are uh, online. And for people on the line, you can either go to freeconferencecall.com and join a meeting with CPRN as the name, or I've sent the slides out and you can follow along. And so I'm going to say things like, I'm going to move to our next slide, which is the agenda, um, if I can. Okay. So I want to do um, a round of introductions just so people can, you know, do so much by phone. I think it's useful to connect names and faces. And uh, I'll, I'll just let you know. So I'm Paul Gross, and I have on the phone uh, Susan Horn, who's our lead statistician. Neil, I do not know how to pronounce your last name, but is a clinical research assistant at Seattle Children's. Uh, I have Ken Rogers from AI DuPont and Jeff Leonard from uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital all on the phone. So if we could just take the time to go around and just turn and face everybody and say hi and what your name is and what institution you're from, I think it would be great. So Christy Bjornsson. Last name's help too. Okay. <laughs>
And in, and in the back we have Okay, and in the back row we have Great. Well, thanks everyone. And I want to just, um, I want to point out we do, so this, so the agenda is we're going to talk a bit, just review. It was interesting. I, as I went to create this presentation, I looked at what we talked about last uh, year and I went, oh, there's the set of things I didn't get done um, or we didn't get done. But, um, you know, so I used that to, to list some of my uh, setbacks, but also to look at, uh, to think about some of our accomplishments. And then I want to spend some time talking about the study pipeline and how do we generate more for the study pipeline, um, and a bit more about uh, the, the subcommittees that both support that as well as the other operations of the network. A number of you have signed up, but we need a few more uh, volunteers and talk about our plans going forward. Love for this to be interactive. I will repeat the question at any point for the benefit of the people uh, on the call. Um, so um, this is so if you go to the slide that's the CPRN leadership team, uh, the way we function is is all this is all sort of volunteer time as you all know. Um, but I have highlighted uh, a few of the people that are from the leadership team and are in the room. And so if you could just sort of raise your hand there. There's uh, one, two, three, Ga Gary Noritz, Ed Hurwitz, Amy Bales. Who else do I have from my team? And then a couple people on the call, including uh, Jeff Leonard and Susan Horn. So um, there are a number of other people here, but like Uni, I think is probably still stuck up in board meeting um, uh, aspects. And Michelle Schusterman couldn't make it um, this year, nor could Mary Gennady. Uh, okay, so if you turn to the slide that's about um, accomplishments and setbacks, yeah, if, you, if you're sitting in the back and you don't have slides, you, there's more copies forward. So, um, and swag, actually I had a swag at every spot there. Although I am told, so the swag is super important. I am Googling to see whether or not it's a myth, whether or not this will demagnetize your uh, hotel card. Um, but I have one business card and my hotel card in the back. For those of you on the phone, the swag is a thing that you stick on the back of your cell phone that holds about two credit cards. Uh, I think it's incredibly important because I know I never can find my hotel card. I'll see if I demagnetize it shortly. And whenever my wife goes out, she goes out with a credit card and a license plate and her phone. I'm sorry, license, uh, a driver's license. She comes back with her phone, but she's misplaced her driver's license and, and the credit card. Um, and so this is like the guaranteed way to hold on to both of them. We'll have to figure out the demagnetizing later. Okay, off the, from the swag. So accomplishments. Um, I feel like given the fact that uh, last year I said we were in the drudgery phase, I feel like we've gotten through a lot of that and made a ton of progress. So we did a line-by-line -line comparison of our whole data model against the CPCDEs. Uh, which and I've now been invited to join the committee for the stewarding of them going forward, which is great. Uh, we had a number of things where we overlapped and were similar. We had a couple things that we are going to change in the CPRN data model at our next rev of the data model, uh, and then a few suggestions to the, C the CDE team. Uh, and then large areas where what we collect is not relevant to what the CDEs do, and the CDEs collect things that are not appropriate for clinical practice because they'd be too time consuming. So uh, good opportunity to stay synced with uh, other databases for research in the future. Feel free to interrupt at any time if you have a question because, Ed, you have that questioning look on your face, but maybe not. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, we got our, our uh, PCORI award of uh, $50,000 for Research CP, which allowed us to uh, that really funded the meeting that we held in Chicago, which um, a number of you were at, and was um, the whole process was really quite illuminating, and it's helped us. Uh, we're now in the final throes of the manuscript that, where we've come up with these 16 top priorities and a longer set of things that are of interest to the, uh, to the patient community, and we're going to use that as a key guide. So I think that's a big accomplishment, and I think we've formed some relationships 
that if we're applying to PCORI or if you just want sort of patient representatives in a study, we've got a great set, a diverse set of people that are very interested in being engaged in research going forward. Uh, we have 14 IRB approvals, 12 BAAs or uh, data use agreements approved so that we can move data from the sites to uh, University of Utah, although the process of doing that is, a, is another step. Uh, we have six sites actively collecting data, two collecting directly into the EMR, four collecting into REDCap, uh, a number of other sites that are getting closer on their, red, on their implementation of uh, EPIC forms. Uh, most of the REDCap sites are Cerner sites and are kind of uh, passing time until, uh, until, Cerner, until we have Cerner forms implemented. Uh, we've completed our SOPs, which defined a way in which new sites could join. We've had three sites uh, join since then. So, Aloysia, you want to raise your hands? One, one new site, and then we've got Michael Kruer back there, and Manish Shah from UT Houston, uh, who's also joined. So, there's a you know clear set of hurdles. Starts with doing the IRB protocol for the registry, um, and it's. As, as you all know, it's not insignificant amount of work to be ready, and so it really makes it so that people that are, are here are, you know, are committed because it's uh, not, not easy to, to get done. But it also gives us guidelines for how we conduct studies, how we look at registry data, and uh, I really want to spend both of our time talking about getting more of that going. We did uh, collaborate with Michael Kruer on an R01 that he submitted uh, for doing the phenotypic analysis of registry data for patients that he is able to enroll in his genetic study. Um, so that's one of the models by which we can uh, conduct research, and we were, um, you know, excited to use that as sort of a litmus test of our of our process. So, so Michael, will wish you luck on whenever that review happens and your, your score and getting funded to do that work. Uh, we built MyCP or My Cerebral Palsy, which is currently closed for new signups. It's in beta test, but that's the web portal that gives uh, the community members access to the survey-based uh, PROs or other sort of annual measures that we'll do that are patient-reported types of studies. It's very much so like intended to be like Ian is or the Interactive Autism Network that has a large community following and allows you to do uh, direct to patient-oriented research as opposed to clinical research. Uh, we have a preliminary registry report on, uh, on Friday that uh, Gary submitted to ACPDM and then said, I can't make <laughs> the, the presentation, so Paul, will you present it? So um, I'm looking forward to presenting our first information about our first 829 patients in the registry. We actually have over uh, over 900 now, and it's kind of growing rapidly. And I'm sure that when the next Epic site comes on board, it'll it'll uh, grow in another big leap. Uh, and then we licensed CP Pro from Boston University as uh, the the pediatric pro group study group got together, and we were looking at. Uh, at whether or not we want to do um, PDCAT or CP Pro, and we decided for a variety of reasons that CP Pro was uh, more appropriate, and we were able to get a free license to that. So we're working to get the short forms implemented in REDCap, and that will then become an annual measure that we have in place uh, for our community registry. So those are all the things we've gotten done since last year at this meeting. Go ahead, Michael. What the domains are, I could, but I would, if somebody doesn't know off the top of their head, I would have to look it up. I know, you know, mobility is one, and I don't know if there's anybody on the call. The question was, what are the... Yeah, and so the question was, what are the domains of CP Pro? We So we have a full comparison of them. So if you want that, I would say, I can send you that. I'd be glad to follow. Yeah. Um, so it was done as a follow-on by a set of people from PDCAT, although PDCAT is now a company and they're actively licensing. Um, so, uh, but I can get you some more information on that. Um, okay, so any questions about what we've accomplished as a group? I probably left off some things that we've, we've done, but um, we've, I feel like we've gotten a, a lot done. We've 
clearly had some setbacks. It's not all rosy. Um, you know, it was a lot of effort to do those two rounds of PCORI uh, applications for the large-scale trial. Um, the feedback that we got was pretty frustrating because – uh, there was nothing new that wasn't in our letter of intent, so they really probably could have told us that we would not be successful regardless of how good our observational design was. They, they're not really funding causal inference style studies, PBE style studies in that um, FOA. And so doing all that work and only to discover that that it wasn't likely was quite frustrating because it was a lot of work. Um, the pro registry, uh, I saw that I was saying it would be ready by this uh, this past January. It's not ready yet. So I'll go ahead, Michael, you had another question? So, so the question is, did, did we get a sense that they had um, a preconceived notion of what they will fund and they just didn't get the importance of this population? And I would say no. We actually, I think it was apparent from the summary statements, and we asked the question explicitly if it mattered that we weren't on their priority map. And they said, no, you've done a very good job of both engaging patients and you know, making the case for the importance of this population. So I, I believe if we submitted a randomized control trial that was well designed, it, it would have had a very good chance. I, I just think that they, in fact, their program staff speaks differently than their review staff does with how they view uh, sort of more modern trial designs. And so I really think that was the essence of it. Um, No. They, the, so the question was, to, was the second aspect that they don't have enough money? No, they're fully funded through, tw through the grants that they will start in 2019 and to fund those for five years. They are all in a, in a world of, like, trying to figure what's going to happen with the Affordable Care Act, which is what funds them, or the, the device tax, which I think directly funds them. And so, they're, you know, their future is in question. And I think it's challenging for an organization to maintain its staff when their future is in question, but they do have sufficient funding. And, and you know, I, I personally, for the right thing, would apply to PCORI again, uh, but I would, I would rather apply to NIH first. Um, so, uh, okay, so the Pro Registry has been delayed. The big, uh, some of the biggest challenges there are a little bit about um, just – the process of iterating on the, um, the studies that were defined and a little bit getting the infrastructure in place. And we're still waiting for the IRB approval for that. The core issue on the IRB approval is that a few people in our sphere at University of Utah need to get IRB training. Um, I've been taken off the IRB because I have not finished my IRB training. But um, Debbie, you want to give an update on the, the actual, because one of the one of the resources we have at University of Utah is a survey methodologist, and she reviewed the surveys and had feedback about the length of them, about norming some of the data. Do you want to give an update on where you are? So how long is there's two there's two surveys that'll probably be broken up into more but they're 20 30 minute kinds of surveys not so a lot of the survey methodologist feedback is if you can get things in five minute chunks that are like more narrowed on the on the domain you'll get much more engagement um,
はい So just for the people on the line, the, the feedback from the survey methodologist was just that there were some things to do to the data elements to make them comparable to other, other studies and in general that it was too long. And since we have already gone out to the adult group for feedback, we want to kind of get our ducks in a row before we go back out to them having responded to this feedback. Um, okay. Let me uh, – so – uh, you know, so I think with um, with IRB approval, we just have some mods to do for that. We're not quite ready to go with the pediatric side. We I just had a conversation with Mary Slavin today about getting the short forms for CP Pro. That'll take some time to get that into RedCap um, and uh, get that ready to go. But you know, hopefully in in coming months we'll be able to start to go out and reach out to the community with these measures and then start to capture them annually. It was really clear from from the research CP meeting that both the ability to do these types of studies annually as well as all the data we're collecting in the clinical registry were, you know, longitudinally were absolutely critical to uh, the, the learning that's necessary for this community overall. Um, CERN efforts to date have been, there, there have been multiple tries and, and multiple either failures or, or delays. I've, I've failed. Um, Tom Novacek is here and, and Gillette has just been delayed. They are planning on tackling it. They are agreeing to share their results. Um, they do have, you know, funding to do it. Um, but so that we hope that that will get underway soon. Tom, is there anything you want to add about that? Interesting. So um, Michael Partington is going to Kansas City and has they have Cerner there, so there's an opportunity to capitalize. Um, any other questions on that? Yeah, go ahead. Deb. So we have currently we have Epic, and what we have in Epic are a set of forms that were developed nationwide you use in your clinical practice. So saying data queries is, is getting down to a sort of a later stage of it. Um, and we have red cap. And so sites like, uh, like Seattle and Gillette have clinical research assistants that are entering patient data into, into red cap that's going directly to the Utah implementation of that. What we're talking about doing is doing a, an analog or a parallel to what we've done in Epic in Cerner. So a way that you interact with a structured form and it produces uh, produces your notes, so it's no net um, take of time. Um, okay, so uh, the data transfer process is, um, you know, doing it the first time is the, the key one, and it's, it's taking us longer than, than we thought. Um, but, you know, we're really ironing out all of the kinks. There's a weekly call going on between Nationwide Children's and uh, – University of Utah, and we're, we're down at the point that we've got just a few more corrections to the XML. We've kind of gotten through most of the problems, and we will take the, the first dump of data and do an upload into the registry and, and start to iron out some more details there. Colorado Children's, which is also collecting into EPIC right now, is waiting for that before. So basically, once again, NCH is um, sort of blazing the path and taking all the nicks and cuts and expenses along the way, and then they're going to share the results of that with the other EPIC sites. Uh, uh, and then finally, EPIC site readiness has just has been a challenge. You know, being on EPIC 2018 or the right um, system update for EPIC is does not a uh, CPRN site make. Um, there's just you know lots of sites have had challenges getting the attention of, um, despite their CMIO commitments and whatnot, but getting the attention of their uh, appropriate people to do it. When there's a lockdown, there's a freeze for this, whatever. So lots of things have been pushed out as a function of that. So those are some of the setbacks. Um, got a number of active working groups. Um, I actually just thought of another one that's spinning up. But, you know, besides the executive committee that meets uh, monthly, uh, Debbie talked a bit about the adult study group, which has a parallel uh, um, study panel that they work with of uh, consumers. 
you know, all of you are, are very engaged either biweekly or, uh, or monthly. And uh, as I said, we're kind of coming out of the drudgery phase there. Um, we have a new group that's spun up based on the presentation that Rob Bolo did back in March to do QI for ITB pumps. Um, send that person to voicemail so I don't get distracted by my phone beeping. Um, we have a small group discussing uh, SDR versus Botox as a randomized control trial as a follow-on to the feedback we got from PCORI. So NIH gave us feedback. So a former – Deb Hertz is a former uh, from person from the Division of uh, Clinical Research in NINDS, reviewed our summary statements and our application and said, we would need you to narrow this, too. They felt like they, it was pretty broad. And so we are having a dialogue um, about uh, doing an SDR versus Botox uh, trial that I've been talking to a number of sites about, sort of working through. We'll, um, we're going to pull together a, kind of a formalized study group and start to move that forward sometime after this meeting. But, uh, in fact, uh, Doty Robinson has signed up to do the work from a, uh, from a neurosurgical standpoint, and uh, I've got a couple people that have expressed interest, uh, both you know, PM&R and neurology, uh, on the, to be on the injector side of that uh, equation, to, to use their term. And so I've reached out to some of the, Christy's actually part of that, that team as well. Christy's got such great experience with the SDR trials um, back in the 90s that she's offered to lend some of her expertise to that. Um, we've got a P Pro group that's kind of quiet while we're working on the CP Pro work, and then our we have both an adult and a PEDS community advisory committee. Many members were at the research CP meeting. Any question about working groups? So as an example, um, Jim McCarthy from Cincinnati Children's came to me and said, "I'm interested in getting a group of people together to look at best practices and maybe do a Delphi uh, survey." Um, for, uh, for indications for orthopedic surgeries, um, you know, how can we do that? And so um, I kind of gave them a list of people that are signed up for CPRN, talked about different ways we could do it. He's got some resources to bring together, and it's probably going to go down the direction of doing some QI work uh, in that area. But, you know, any place where you, have an, you think there's an interesting study area, you want to just get connected to people that might be committed to working towards uh, a protocol, a grant, um, or, you know, just a concept. I'm glad to be a, a connector for that. Not that you don't know plenty of your own colleagues, but especially when you're looking at doing some of these in a multidiscipline setting and, and wanting to do them in a multi-center setting uh, can be very, um, it, it can be really advantageous to come and get the, make those connections. So if you turn to the study pipeline slide, um, this is more impressive than it feels to see. It looks more impressive than it feels. And the reason um, to me is only um, Michael Kruer's genetic study is submitted. That, that's actually not entirely true. I think the adult pro registry has some funding that it's submitted for, although I have a feeling that we, it's with Pedal with Pete, and I have a feeling that the grants have come out and we didn't hear about it, so I have a feeling we didn't get it. Um, so only my career study has, uh, is, you know, in for, for funding. A number of these other things we plan to run on our existing infrastructure without additional funding, although when we want to get to data analysis and whatnot, we will absolutely need grant funding. Um, and the PERF infrastructure uh, award that I discussed in a, on a recent call where one of the board members from PERF, uh, so Pediatric Epilepsy Research Foundation, once again, Deb Hertz is really encouraging us to apply for about a, a fifty to hundred thousand dollar a year, two year grant where they will fund infrastructure. I'm I'm going to meet with her tomorrow and ask how would they feel about funding Cerner infrastructure, like anything to get that going faster. But but really, we, we're looking for um, things that will tie in a little bit to epilepsy and CP, but it does not have to be for a trial. Infrastructure is fine. So that's another another one. But Really, we don't have enough things that are far enough along on, you know, moving through the concept approval and getting developed into sort of full protocols that will work in CPRN. So I just want to encourage all of you with study ideas. I know Deb Gabler and Christy Bjornsson are working on a study that's probably a PCORI target. Is that the? Yeah. 
So, and just so I understand for that, I'm not going to try to repeat that all for you on the phone because I'll, I won't do it justice and I don't have a microphone for Christy. So, um, uh, do you envision this as your, as a two-step grant? Like is the CER grant is a second thing. And so, um, yep. Start with a PCORI engagement. Yeah. Right. So I would encourage you to, um, if you're, if you think that the CER grant is with the Corey, put on your track team. Yeah. So, um, but doesn't necessarily have to be. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, um, you know, the, the infrastructure is here to support this, uh, this pipeline of, of studies and to have, uh, you know, colleagues to do multi-discipline, multi-center research for, which is just, you know, so much of the, my experience with HCRN is seeing how many studies were conceived of out of, you know, what they thought was a real trend in the data that was really a center effect. It was a single, it was really a single center um, having a difference they couldn't see. And when they kind of ran it through looking at it from a multi-center perspective, they were like, hmm, that effect went away and there's, there's not a study here. And so, um, so between the registry being multi-center and your opportunity to collaborate with people that are contributing data to the, the registry, I think it will really strengthen the possibilities for, uh, for applications. Um, so with that, I wanted to just refresh everyone. Not everyone was able to make the call. Not everyone was able to um, watch the slide presentation. I, I recorded the call and, and the slides for the uh, SOP on research concept development. But I wanted to talk about it and see if people had other questions or were, were clear on it. So. Uh, it's, it's encoded in, in uh, Chapter 4 in the SOPs. Um, there, there, in there is the outline of what you need to do for a concept. It's kind of exactly what Michael Kruer did uh, in uh, presenting it to the investigator committee. The idea is you, you just do the initial concept, or when you're just even thinking about it, just reach out to me for, or someone on the executive committee so that we can say, yeah, this makes sense. Like, this would make sense as a PCORI study. It's worth you investing the time to do this concept and run it by the, uh, the, the committee. Um, and we're really just trying to make sure that it's, that it's a research question that is appropriate for the infrastructure we have. There are lots of studies that involve neonatology, and I imagine we'll, we'll do one of those. But we have no neonatologists in, you know, that's not, the, that's not how we're aligned. We're really kind of further down the road and uh, – with um, you know PT and PM and R and neurology and although there are not a lot of the neurologists are doing things you know early on but even like Yvonne Wu who's running the heel study at uh, out of UCSF is saying you know I, the portion of kids that I look at for CP is really so young it doesn't like the network doesn't have any uh, big benefit for her. Um, so anyway, so make sure it's a fit, and then also just to see where the top, you know, we want there to be investigator-initiated ideas, but we want to map that to, well, what does the community care about? And so that's what's important about that research CP list. You can either start there or start for what's, you know, uh, vexing you in your practice that you'd like to see uh, an evidence base for, and either one is, uh, is sufficient. Um, so the idea is, you initiate that concept and you develop that like two two page uh concept um and then we 
do a walkthrough, like a half an hour presentation with the investigator committee, and we just gauge interest. Um, and specifically, we will do it with a, a voting level of interest. We, what I haven't really solved, even though the SOPs are written, is that we know it's impossible to get all the investigators on a call on the first Monday or the third Tuesday. And so coming up with a mechanism, that there can be a real uh, view and interaction so that people can make a meaningful vote. Um, that, that is one just bit of process that I'm going to have to work through with the first guinea pig. Um, and uh, so assuming it gets a positive, um, a positive vote, then you kind of go into working with uh, resources in our data coordinating center to develop and, and the study group to develop the protocol. Um, and, you know, move it along to the point that you feel like it's something that you would submit to a granting agency. Um, so, I'm, go ahead. So the question, so I can repeat it for the people on the phone, was do we have a concept of people asking for data collection that's not in the, the registry and we and the scientific review committee says this is great and we should change CPRN? Um, I don't think we've written, so let me just say a couple things. I don't think we've written anything explicitly about that. I do think that, you know, we already have a plan for a 2.0 of the CPR and data set that's really about getting feedback as we roll this out across all of the functions. What works? How sparse is the matrix? Is there a set of things we could, you know, standardize on so the matrix is not sparse, or should we keep it a sparse matrix for looking at practice variation? Um, so it's really aimed at sort of that level of piece. And I've always viewed that any studies that come through, they'll leverage whatever they can out of the registry. Um, but it won't be okay for a study to be sparse in its data collection. Uh, and so that will get be funded through sort of clinical research assistance. Um, but I don't, I don't see any reason why if we went, wow, this is really a piece of data that we should be collecting that we um, can't do that. But there is not an SOP about how do you change the, uh, how do you change the registry data collection. So it's a, a valid point, and I will switch to making a note about valid points. Pardon me one second. It's a great question, Ed. Thanks. Okay. So if you go to the next slide in my, we're now in my flow charty kind of thing, and I didn't number slides, which is, you know, a big thing. It's entitled uh, CPR and Research Concept and Protocol Development Process Continued. Um, so, the idea is, so you develop it as if you're, you know, got a complete study. There's a whole template for what it is you, you need to do for uh, for it. But if you're also targeting a specific uh, granting opportunity, you may you may be using that format. And then the scientific review subcommittee gets together and reviews it, just like an NIH study section would. Provides you with feedback. Um, provides summary feedback to the executive committee, uh, and then you you get uh, you go through a um, approval as to whether or not you move forward. You get a bit a chunk of time to respond to that feedback. So it's kind of like what you're really submitting is your A1 instead of your you know your A0. And so you get a chance to take that feedback, and then you say, okay, I've taken that feedback. I'm now ready for the research subcommittee, the research steering subcommittee to sort of vote on, can we put the full weight of uh, CPRN behind that? And so that then goes to that committee with the, uh, the review feedback comments from the, the uh, scientific review subcommittee chair as to the changes that were made. And it gets voted on. And that, that subcommittee is the executive committee plus a number of people from the uh, community advisory committee uh, council we're really looking at is, you know, it's already been vetted for quality. It's just given it the final go-ahead to say, yeah, we really, you know, we can only do so many studies as a network. This is one we should we should do. Um, and then, given that that go-ahead, you then sort of do the, we do the work like we would in the deep work to finalize 
uh, grant application for whatever the, the agency is that we're targeting or the funding opportunity is that we're targeting. And so the DCC is working on, you know, getting the whole statistical plan and um, in a level of depth that's necessary for the application uh, and sort of uh, getting all the, the budget numbers lined up and whatnot. So we do all of the really heavy lifting uh, after that approval. And then the model is, so I'm now on the last slide that has just two squares. The, the, the model is that after that approval, it's, you know, the PI for that grant is the funding institution. So it's not that the University of Utah is the, the funding institution for grants. It's really that whoever the PI for the grant is, is doing it um, in conjunction with their institution. So the model of what we did for the Big Pecori grant where Rich Stevenson was the PI and clearly the either the largest or second largest um, sub item on the, the grant was the, the University of Utah DCC. Um, that's really kind of the model of how we expect most things will go through. So, um, so if you invest this time, your university will get the indirects that it loves. Um, not that everybody that's participating, participating won't get it as well. So, Christy, you, you had asked about this explicitly. I had wanted to do this. I want to get a sense. Do people understand what it takes to sort of build something now that could go through this process and get this leverage? Do people have questions? That, I'm sure there's understanding it at the slide level and then there's, you know, starting to do it, which is another thing. But um, this is the area where I just say it would be great if we could invest, uh, you know, find those, those meaningful studies and find a way to get, you know, the study group together to move these forward. Um, the more activity we have going like that, the more likely I think we'll get sustained funding. Go ahead, Deb. Right. Uh, I, I agree. And so Deb Gabler is making the statement that the white paper from the uh, research CT uh, meeting will be a great sort of stimulator of uh, what stakeholders are interested in and will help, you know, more things form in that regard. Michael? So uh, the question was, what's the update on the research CP? So, um, so the update is that we've written, we're on version 12, um, 14, sorry, Ed's correcting me. Um, uh, so we're at the stage that Ed, uh, Ed Hurwitz has uh, someone who's going to assist in doing the end notes. Um, we have like minor, minor edits to, to do. And so, Susan, if you're listening, I could use your editing um, capabilities. Uh, okay. So it's been through an, a number of, she says, okay. Um, she catches all sorts of things. So we're in the sort of final um, stages. We've also had a conversation with uh, um, developmental medicine, child neurology about making it an open paper. Uh, they said that, that this really meets the bar for what they like to do is open. So if we get it um, submitted and accepted, it will be one that uh, becomes, as soon as it's published, becomes available online as opposed to being behind a firewall for you know, a year or something. So it's something that we can get out to all of the stakeholders in the community and, and whatnot. So, and I'm going to keep, I'm trying to make sure that we have as much information as we can without damaging our sort of property rights and whatnot on the website. So I've published a lot of our raw data um, about what the, you know, what the co-digital process um, revealed in terms of priorities and things like that. So um, we're trying to make sure there's at least actionable data out there before the publication is ready. Wednesday night on the postcard. Uh, the, the postcard that was in the bag, I'm glad you, uh, glad you saw it. Um, so, yeah, so uh, that was part of AACPDM's uh, commitment to dissemination. Um, I think we surprised them. We submitted the abstract in January. We did not get accepted in March. And they said, oh, yeah, we get lots of submissions for research that's going to be done and have results by the meeting. But we only can take things that are, like, they're, they're in publication or, or whatnot. And I'm like, We'll, 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 we'll wait a minute. You committed to disseminating this. And so they really, um, they responded by giving, we asked, so can we get an opportunity uh, to be in the bag in some way that can point this out to people? And so they, they committed to that, which was great. Um, and then Gilda said that 2018, she'll give us like a general session slot to talk about the findings. So, um, um, you know, I think, I think it'll withstand the test of time. So I think that's, that's good. 
Uh, okay, so um, I think I covered these re these key concepts. I'm on the uh, key considerations. Um, so investigator committee votes on concepts, and that's because it's a multi-center effort, and we want people bought in um, for what you know what uh, studies are implemented at your site. Um, there's uh, community involvement all the way through on the final vote. Uh, and then in the end, the, the executive committee gives the kind of go, no, go, just because there's a limited number of resources and we've got to make sure we put our uh, eggs in the baskets of things. Now I'm going to mix some metaphor. I'll stop. Uh, you get the idea. Um, by opening it up to external PIs to come through and be able to uh, present a concept, we open the door to, you know, future partnership and sort of best science. It's like... Um, Scott McNeely, so I worked at Microsoft, as many people know, and Scott McNeely, who ran Sun Microsystems, loved to needle Bill Gates because Bill Gates bragged about how he had all this, you know, he had so many smart people. And Scott McNeely said, no matter how many smart people you've got, there are more smart people outside of your company than there are inside your company. And so that's the, mm -hmm. you know, that's the, the nod to why it's important to make sure that uh, despite uh, the, the great group that we've assembled, there's lots of great ideas out there, and we really want to get the, the best research uh, funded and going. Uh, so I would encourage you to look at the concept. If you look at SOP4, um, it's on the website. It's been distributed to you. Um, I would encourage you to look at the concept items that you need to have and look at the protocol form if you're trying to figure out what, what you'd be getting into if you did this. Um, and then I had a discussion item, which was cost of registry studies, but that's actually back from when we did this initially. It's just the acknowledgement that while we're collecting this data, when we want to go and do a, uh, an analysis of the registry, we're actually not funded to do that per se, so we'll be pursuing funding opportunities to do registry analyses other than sort of top-level uh, analyses of the basic characteristics and whatnot. Okay. Um, the last thing I want to do was make a pitch for scientific review subcommittee and the manuscript uh, review subcommittee. So the SOPs are defined for those. There's not a lot of work at this stage because basically what the scientific uh, review committee will be doing is the work that gets through concept. And so if you haven't reviewed a concept as an investigator, there's no work for the scientific review subcommittee to be doing yet. But we view that as a really big value add, like to you know, be like an NIH study section, really uh, critically review these uh, applications and, and give feedback that can then be uh, acted upon so that we can do the best work possible. Similarly, for manuscripts, we want to make sure that the quality bar that is represented by all the work that we're doing to bring CPRN together is represented. So it's intended to be a quick turn to give a critical review and make it so that if you're submitting a manuscript that's representing work that's been done through CPRN, it gets sort of minimal feedback from the, or less feedback from the editorial board of whatever journal you're submitting to and sort of uh, accelerate that. And I can tell you, we, we looked a lot at PCAR and the, the Pediatric Emergency uh, Network for this, and, and they, their folks say it's absolutely accelerated the speed at which they get things published. Uh, so that's a key thing. So um, I sent out uh, sort of survey forms that just allow you to volunteer. I'll resend them. I've resent them a couple times. I think we've got about 10 volunteers. Need a few more across disciplines to really be able to have well, uh, well balanced groups. Uh, and when it gets to be too much work, feel free to say no. But right now, you're just committing to 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 doing it, and there's not a lot beyond that at this stage. Those are it. So plans going forward. Um, so last, last slide. Oh, some of you have an extra slide, which is my slide of shame. It's, uh, it's last year's plans going forward, and that's where I got all my setbacks from, uh, the ones that didn't get executed. So go one more slide beyond that, because I've already, I've already uh, immersed my – I've already put on the hair shirt and, uh, and, <laughs> and beat myself up over that. Okay, so um, plan on the registry is to expand the trial. We've got um, – both neuro, neurosurgical forms, actually I'll ask Jeff Leonard since I've got him uh, on the phone, although he may have uh, had to go. Jeff, are you still there? Still there. Okay, so I'm, uh, every, not that everybody can hear you except for a few people on the call, but uh, any word on where the, where the neurosurgical forms are? Have they gotten into test yet? Or? They're almost, uh, 
We have that preliminary version that I showed you. I am still waiting for those corrections to make it c completely attuned to what the original form was. Uh, right. I'm expecting that within the next week to be up and testing and uh, just in time for my next rhizotomy. <laughs> so, uh, so Jeff says um, they're waiting on a few corrections to just make them uh, have uh, fidelity with the CPR and data model. Um, he expects them to be up and testing within the next week, and he said just in time for his next rhizotomy. Um, so, you know, they'll, they'll do some tests. There may be some iteration based on their experience with that, but he's got a, a good, uh, good responsive team on that, and then we'll be pushing the neurosurgery forms out. Similarly, the orthopedic forms, I've seen them in, implemented in EPIC. We've reviewed them. We've given feedback. Um, so w that'll probably take a bit a bit longer, especially because the orthopedic surgeon who's testing them, I gather, is uh, delivering imminently. Gary says so. Um, Correct. I don't know if there's any anybody else in the uh, um, you know, on the orthopedic side that's doing orthopedic surgeries that will be testing those. So, but uh, those will follow after the neurosurgical forms. Um, so there are the, the more forms coming and then the work going into Cerner and uh, Michael Crew was telling me he's got approval and things are starting to move forward on developing all scripts forms. Uh, so that, Michael, I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that or if I overstated it. Uh, well, so they're not, so... They're based on the data model, which is stored in REDCap, and REDCap is one incarnation. In some ways, we're more, you know, so there's how the data gets represented, and they're all the same in that fashion, okay? That's at the point that it arrives in the registry, they're all exactly the same. Before that, there is, you know, how does the branching logic work? You know, what's the arrangement of the forms and, and whatnot? There are cases where, like I was talking to uh, Texas Scottish Right, and they've got some other measures that while they've got the PTOT form open, they want those measures there. They're not part of the CPR and registry. When they transfer the data, they won't transfer that. That's what's different about their particular EPIC implementation. So what's different is really how they get implemented in that particular system. But the, the starting point is really the – Either the EPIC form or the REDCap form is the starting point that sites choose to, to build from. Uh, so uh, then, the, you know, the, the next thing is clearly just to get more studies going. So there's this work going on the, for the QI uh, group. We're presenting our preliminary uh, efforts there on Friday in a breakfast seminar. Um, really want, just want to get more uh, concepts um, out that are on the research CP opportunity map um, and, you know, get our initial QI protocol implemented, and then we'll have, like, lots of things going. And then lastly, to launch the, the community registry. Uh, so get that IRB approval, make those modifications to the adult surveys, and uh, get the, the PEED surveys uh, up and running. Um, so that's where we're going. Any questions? My battery is on red on my computer. My phone is still holding up. My earbud probably has plenty of juice, even though it looks funny. And um, that's it. Thanks, everybody. We'll, uh, no, thank you. Great fun and great work. Bye, all. Thanks, Paul. Bye-bye.